Hey there friends, today I'm really excited to show you how I created this sparkly, shiny winter card using the Home for the Holidays stacks, dies, and stamp set from Concord and Ninth. So let's get started. This card may look really difficult, but there's only a few steps. It's just a lot of uh, gluing and pasting, but I really love this card so much. I really wanted to create a video to share it with you. So we're going to start out with our background. And for that, I'm going to grab these polyglaze foiling sheets from Gina K designs. And I love this starry design. It's called flurries. You get 10 sheets in this set and I just love them because you can customize them and you can see here we've added some color. So what I'm going to do is grab my stick and stamp mat and we are going to add a blue background to this card panel. I'm grabbing Blueberry and Midnight from Concord and Ninth. I'm also grabbing some ink stands here to make sure that these stay nice and safe while I'm ink blending. And Midnight's a darker color, so we're gonna use that one on the bottom. Blueberry at the top. So I'm going to start out with Blueberry. This uh, foiling sheet, they, they blend like a dream. I couldn't believe how beautifully they blend, just like Gina's cardstock. It's just great for blending. Goes on really nice and smooth. So even if you're not an expert blender, which I am not by any means, you can get a really good result with this. Now with these sheets, uh, I contacted my friend Mindy Egan to ask, do I blend before or blend after? And she told me that you could do either. So I tried it blending before and then foiling and it worked just great. But if you prefer to blend after, then you can try that too. I'm gonna go back with midnight now and get that towards the bottom. Look how much darker that color is there. And a lot of this at the bottom is going to be covered up so if it doesn't look great at the bottom, I don't really need to worry about that as much. I just want to make sure that this middle section where the two colors meet looks really great together. Matt, I'm going to go back in with a little bit more blueberry in the center to make that center a little bit darker where those two colors meet. And I think I am going to stop right there. Okay, I have a Royal Sovereign. I know that it is not a mink, but it works just fine for what I need. I have a piece of parchment paper here. I'm just gonna fold in half to put that, put my card on the inside. Okay, and then I have my foil here. Now this is mink foil, it's silver. And we are just gonna pop that right there and make sure that that edge is nice and flat and run it through this machine until it grabs it and then it's just going to slowly feed it through now i put my foil pretty side up and the pretty side of the polyglaze sheet is up as well okay oh i can already see the little stars are you ready? Oh, it is so pretty. See those pretty stars? Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. What a pretty starry background. And look at all that foil left over. You could use that on another project. All right, let's put this back here. 
save that foil for later and I'm gonna turn that machine off. Now my, my panel doesn't have the foiling all the way to the edges. So there's about a quarter of an inch on either edge. So I'm going to back this piece of polyglaze with an A2 size piece of midnight cardstock from Concord and Nine. And we're gonna just trim that down. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this down. I want my lighter side, the blueberry side to be up, the midnight side to be down. Oh, and of course I ran out of adhesive. Now we're rolling. Okay, so blueberry side up, midnight side down, and we'll get this panel stuck on. Make sure it's nice and straight. And there is our card background, nice and starry and pretty. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is create our snowy panels at the bottom. And now I'm gonna pull out the awesome Home for the Holidays bundle from Concord and Ninth. You can see that I already have all of my dies here, so they're nice and organized. Okay. This snowy uh, piece here can be used for so many different things. I love that. Okay, I'm going to do two pieces, one a bit larger than the other. So this one, I'm going to have it go slightly upward like that. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit here. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab some mint tape from scrapbook.com, pop that on. You wanna make sure that your die goes edge to edge so it cuts all the way across that panel. And I want this to not run horizontal through my machine. Since I just got new cutting plates, I wanna kinda of keep those nice and neat. So running things vertically as they would go through your machine really helps helps the machine run a bit smoother. Okay, there's that one. And then I'm gonna do one a little bit like this. This one is going to have more of a bump up here and go down this way. Making sure that's running edge to edge. There's my other snowy piece here. And then I'm going to cut some glitter paper to top those snowy hills using the exact same die and some Concord and Ninth glitter paper. Now this is already cut to um, five and a half right here. I am going to just top those hills. So we want some nice thin pieces here. The first thing I have to do is just cut the actual shape first. Now glitter paper, it, this glitter paper cuts like a dream, but it's not great sticking to tape. So I usually make it so the tape is touching my mat here. That makes it a little bit easier to keep it in place. And I'm running this one through horizontally. And then I'm gonna move it down just slightly, kind of angle it a little bit. so that we can create just a little line of snow on the top. I'm gonna to do this two times to give both of my snowy hills some glitter on the top. And here is my second. This one I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. Oh, I just realized that this is the bottom piece that I wanted here. 
So I'm going to just trim this with a straight edge here, about ooh, almost an inch on that right side. That's how much space I want there. And I'm making sure it's lined up here. There we go. I highly recommend some tweezers when you're doing kind of this piecing work like this. It really makes a big difference in how you can place things when you're using some reverse tweezers. I'm using these from scrapbook.com, but there are lots of different ones on the market to check out. And I'm just gonna get this edge on the snow. Little touches like this really elevate the design. Just adding some of that beautiful glitter paper from Concord and Ninth just really adds to it. You don't have to create the entire thing out of glitter paper. I'm definitely a less is more kind of gal when it comes to glitter. And you'll see that I'm just using it uh, for the highlights on this card. Okay, getting that snow in place. And we're gonna really make it look quite three dimensional by adding it to our card front with some dimensional adhesive. So what I'm doing here is putting the background kind of not too far up because I do not want to, to miss out on any of that, that beautiful uh, background. But I do want to get it slightly down here. I'm going to put it all the way to the bottom, actually. We're going to get it all the way down. Now this one, I am going to just go ahead and adhere with glue. Or you know what, we'll use some Gina K tape runner. There we go. Now this panel is going to be raised up. It's gonna be elevated. Now I'm using some uh, tape from, Crafty Foam Tape from Scrapbook Adhesives by 3L and my brand new to me Spellbinders uh, scissors where I just don't know how I lived without these because they are so perfect for uh, sticky things. I just love them. I gifted myself those during their holiday sale and I'm so glad that I did. You would not regret th that purchase. Okay, let's get some of this tape on here and this one we're gonna just cut in half. And this is what I love about them. They just cut these pieces just so perfectly. I already have inky hands which I did see that I got a little bit of blue on my white, but that's okay because we're gonna cover that up anyway. There we go. There is our snowy bottom and our starry top. Now from here, you could do anything with this panel, but let's put some of these cute little houses on top. Okay, I chose a color scheme and the great thing about this is that you can use all scraps so that's pretty much what I'm doing today so my color scheme is nectar poppy uh, sea glass and a tide pool so those four colors against that blue backdrop and then for the inside of the windows I used honeycomb and I really love that combination of colors. I tried it without the honeycomb, but it really warms up the scene when you have those glowing windows. I'm gonna cut as much as I can in one go to make sure that I can get everything in as I can. Let's see here. Now this house is going to be nectar, but I'm gonna run out of paper here. So I'm gonna reach into my little scraps envelope here. And I'm gonna 
back up for you. Reach into my scraps envelope and pull out another piece of nectar. I try to use ones that I've already cut into. Let's see if I have one that's cut into here. It doesn't look like I do. Okay, so I have this little nectar house. I'm gonna move this over here and do this little nectar part of a house. And I'm gonna do a little nectar door. What I tried to do is mix and match these colors across each of the houses so that each color was represented somewhere in each of the houses. And it kind of ties all the colors in together. Next, we're gonna use Poppy. And I am going to cut this little A-frame house and another square door, rectangular door, I should say. Just those two for this Poppy piece. And I just realized that I forgot one of my nectar pieces. And this is really cool. These houses are all in different pieces. And when you put them on top of one another, it creates a really three-dimensional looking uh, house without using any foam adhesive. You can actually use foam adhesive and make it stand up even more, but you don't have to. It makes it look really, really neat, just glued together. And I love that the windows are what kind of tells you that you're lining it up right. Okay, next we are using sea glass. And I'm doing, let's see, this part of the house, I think here, yep. That part of the house there. And that's it for that one. Beautiful. And then for tide pool, we have quite a few different things. We have this house and the rounded door. I think just those two. There we go. Now, the other thing that I have are my trees. And for my trees, I used peacock. Just one little piece of peacock cuts all those trees. I love that they're all together in one die. You can cut them all in one go. So four little trees, and then we'll cut some glittery snow for those. Next, I'm going to do my roofs. And for that, I need this big wide A-frame roof. And I need this one. I love that they include the roof and kind of the eaves. And then this one here. Let's see if I can fit all these on one piece of white. I don't think I can but at least I'll get two in one go. I always find that it saves you so much time when you cut all of the same color at once and you're not going back and forth and back and forth. So the less revolutions you can do on your die cutting machine, the better. There's my A-frame. And there's these two roofs. I'm gonna kind of keep these separate so I don't mix them up. And I'm using the same glitter paper that I just cut before. And I'm gonna cut the tops of the trees and there's a little piece here for the roof too. Love that detail. 
I'm also going to use, let's see, this one to cut, I think that's the top of that one. Nope, this one. I wanna cut these two out in glitter paper. So I'm gonna put that on the side. I think I'll probably have to cut this one out two times. Okay, glitter paper go. Okay, there's the roof details. I'm gonna throw that piece away and just keep these two snowy pieces here. And then these are the tree details here. I'm gonna cut this one two times. And I think that is everything cut. I have three doors. I have my pieces for my A-frame. I have my pieces for my teal house. I have my pieces for my nectar house with that door and with that door. Let me see. And do I have the roof line for the A-frame? Yep, I have the roof line for all three. Okay, now all we have to do is create our little houses. So Concord and Ninth has made this set super easy to put together. And just by lining up the windows in the sections that fit together on each house. And I love that. I love when there's no guesswork or, you know, you have to figure things out. So just a little bit of glue and lining up that window there. Love it. And this house looks a bit more complicated than it actually is, but it's just because of the roof lines going on that it makes it look like more than two pieces, which I love that too. I always, I'm always amazed at people who can design these kind of dies that fit together because I know that I could not figure it out. And then this little roof line is going to go on here. And this cuts off this piece right here on the house and hangs over the edge just slightly of those two walls. And then this little piece goes on the roof line up here. And I'm just gonna straighten that, get it in place. Now, before I forget, I wanna add these snowy touches as well. I didn't wanna do the entire roof snowy because it was just too much glittery and it kinda of competed with that beautiful starry night in my background. So just these little touches make it really nice. we go. Now that's in place. Now there's a piece here that's really nice for putting on the edge of the roof. I'm going to put this one here just on this right edge and I like to have it come up a little bit further past the roof line. Just kind of Make sure I get that in place. You can use your tweezers here to do that. So pretty. And then last but not least, let's put on the door. Try 
try to get that centered there. So that's pretty much how these houses are going to come together. I am going to add the finishing touches to the other two while I speed that up and you can have a watch. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I backed these little houses with some yellow to give them a nice glow. So I held the house up to this honeycomb paper and then just trimmed behind the edge of the house and behind the edge of the roof. So I kind of pull it away a little bit to get my scissors behind my house die cut and then I have that shape so then I can glue this down just kind of putting some adhesive around those window sections and getting that in place it just adds a really nice little bit of warmth to these die cuts Okay, so there's our houses, there's our trees, and then we can put it together. To get behind, I'm gonna start all the way on the left side. I'm gonna start with my tree. So I'm gonna put some foam adhesive just at the very top. At the very top of that tree. And then glue on the bottom because this part is higher. So the parts that are higher need the glue. The parts that are lower need the foam adhesive. And it would be helpful if I would take off the backing paper. There we go. And this helps them to really stay in place too. Just get stuck down in there. Okay, so I'm going to do that with the house as well. We're going to get some foam adhesive on the top and some glue on the bottom. Once you get this together, it is so satisfying to see it. It is just a joy to put together. And I always find putting together these little scenes uh, so relaxing. Before I get that foam adhesive down, I wanna make sure that it's really straight. Because once it's down, it's kinda down. Okay, this little tree is gonna get tucked in here and he can just use
For my sentiment, I use the All Is Calm, All Is Bright from the um, Home for the Holidays stamp set. I'm just lining this up here. I've already cut one out before and I kind of want to don't waste too much space. So I'm going to get that in place right about there. That always happens to me. Okay. And that looks great. So I'm going to use my powder tool from Tailored Expressions. I'm going to emboss this just to make it look really, really, really nice. Using Versamark ink. I'm going to ink that up. And this is my Stampendable tool. And I think that that looks pretty good. You can really see that. I'm using some white embossing powder from Ranger. It's fine detail. So it should look great on those letters looks good and I don't see any that I need to really brush off around that sentiment so we're gonna go with it putting this on my little clipboard here starting my heat tool And you just want to heat it till you see that white start to pop up. Perfect. Now I just need the sentiment strip here from the die set. And my Platinum 6 machine again. And I'm going to get this put in place. It's the perfect size for this little sentiment strip. Just want to make sure that I get that nice and straight. And again, I'm going to turn it so that it's running vertically, not horizontally. And if your sentiment is a little bit white from the powder that you're using, you can just take a, uh, a chamois, dry chamois, and wipe that off. And it's nice and dark again. I'll put a tiny bit more right here. Okay, and then I'm just going to place this up here. Don't want it too far up. I want it to be kind of down here near my houses just like that and there's our snowy little sparkly village filled with pretty little houses using the home for the holidays stacks dies and stamp from Concord and Ninth. thanks so much for watching me create this card video today I had a lot of fun with this set. I knew I had to have it when I saw it on the website. And you can create so many different things with this set. It doesn't have to be winter scenes. But I also had a lot of fun using the polyglee sheets from Gina K Designs. So I know I'll be using those again in the future. Check out all of the products that I used in the video description box below. Please like this video if you enjoyed watching. Subscribe if you want to watch more card making videos and thanks so much for watching and happy creating friends.